Hello everyone. Today we have a special treat. We have an educator who's been in the field for 25 years coming to give us some insights on what we're learning. So we are going to meet Deb Fracaroli. Deb, hello. Hi. Would you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do? Sure, I'm a speech language pathologist that works for the county and I specialize in all the preschool evaluations for the county. All right. Well, I want to introduce you to our class. We are actually studying, we have an assessment class and we are studying about what are some valid assessments out there that are reliable, especially when we have students who are young children. So if, a, if an educator had a, a problem that they notice with communications and they come to you, what are some assessments that you might use? Um, the two primary ones that are utilized for preschool are the PLS, which is the preschool language scale. And the other one is called the SELF, which is the clinical evaluation of language fundamentals. And they both look at understanding language, or we would say receptive language, as well as expressive language. All right, and they're all right. both standardized assessments. Okay, so you have some standardized formal assessments. Two of them that you mentioned are the SELF and the and the other one is the preschool language scale? Mm -hmm. Those are the um, two primary ones. Okay. What's the difference between both of them? Um, well, the preschool language scale starts at a younger age. So it goes from like zero to starts at birth and okay. does questions with things and stuff. And then it has manipulatives involved with it. So it has like a little toy bear and it might have a rubber ducky and a ball and there's different components that you utilize like that at certain spots in the testing and the clinical, the self, it does not have any manipulatives to it. So the preschool language scale is more for the younger preschooler that you need to keep engaged with toys. And the other one is more for the older preschool students who, cause it's a longer test and it's more complex. Okay, okay, so um, those standardized tests have some very strict protocol and uh, that must be challenging to administer to very young children. What are the challenges that you face? Uh, it is very challenging when you have young children. <laughs> uh, you need to have, you need to know your, you have to have an environment with no distractions first okay. off. Right. Um, and you need to know your test very, very well. So I know when I can switch from one test to another. Yeah and when it's okay and and when i can change some things like you can't change the test it has to be given exactly right or you're changing the scores and they can't they're not valid and they can't be reported and utilized okay okay so some of the challenges young children face are attention and behavior and it's challenging to administer a, a standardized test so we have professionals like you who are trained in the field who will produce valid results because you're able to follow the protocol to, to give the test. Is that right? Yeah, I know when I can manipulate, when I can change things. So I might change a task out of order. I okay. might switch to, a, switch to a task with a manipulative to it if they're not engaging in the picture template or okay. you know those kinds of things. So you have a little bit of uh, leeway there that you can, because you know the test. That's because the advantage. Right, right. Yeah, limited leeway. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any tips for educators? What would help you when they come to you? Would you like them to do some observations or samples or anything like that? That might help you kind of uh, understand in terms of maybe qualifying for a speech disability. Well, I would determine who qualifies. I just, what would be helpful for me is just to as much information you can give me about the child. And yeah. then I will determine which test I need to pull off the shelf. Uh -huh. And then I would determine what time of day and when I come to observe. And then I would also be doing a speech and language sample. And if I know like what the child's interests are, uh -huh. I would try to do a speech and language sample and have a conversation about whatever their interests are maybe, for example. Okay. Or we love this book, so let me use that book and talk about it with them. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. You've, so you've taught us about two tests, the SELF, which is a clinical evaluation of language fundamentals. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And the other one is the PLS, is that the preschool language scale. And then yeah. you said the preschool language scales has some manipulatives and therefore younger age kids. And the, the SELF is a little bit more... Uh, 
more language uh, components in it that has no manipulatives. Right. right? Now, I, yeah, the preschool language scale can go up to like age six. Like okay. it, it, okay. it goes to older kids as well. Right. And the tasks are different, but the main difference is yes, the preschool language scale it has manipulatives. The self doesn't, and they right. kind of the test items look at things in a little different way and view that's why the information from a teacher and a parent are helpful for me to determine which direction i go right right awesome and then in in order to administer these tests because they're standardized they are highly reliable and valid if you follow the protocol of the test and the challenge of young children is attention and behavior so control what you can control control the environment find a place that's distraction free and then collaborate with you. You might come in, take some language samples. You might find out those the the students' interest, so you're able to build rapport with the with the child. Yeah, I would build a rapport before I start testing, and sometimes I might take a break if I'm doing the. I might do the receptive language part, yeah. take a play break, uh -huh. and then move to the expressive part. But you have to know the child because that play break might be more might be hurt you more than helpful because right. then they're not going to re-engage but sometimes what i often do is reschedule the second part like the next day or something yeah well thank you so much for being part of the team and thank you for all your training and your hard work we are grateful for what you do for our students so thank, thank you for you. joining us